Okay, so today we're playing Untouched Scarlet Bay. It's a cooperative cop detective visual novel, which is really interesting. It's like the first co-op visual novel I've ever seen. Like if you have a friend on Steam, you can actually play with them, which makes like the gameplay even 10 times better. But since this is a new game, I don't really have any friends that's playing this game right now. So I'll be playing this game solo and it's very interactive. Like that's like the biggest thing for me. I'd 100% recommend you guys to like play this for yourself. Especially our friends who like who are into visual novel games. Let's get into this. Our new game solo. Antioch Scarlet Bay is designed to be experienced with a partner. Are you want are are you sure you want to play alone? I don't have any friends to play with. Let me just play by myself. Mr. Joe John. Next. Partner's name. Uh let's just call him Robin. Okay, let's just play this. You enter the small and dear office of Commissioner Peterson, a grey haired woman with an intimidating presence and a hard anti watch PD steer. Good evening, please take a seat. A first from you is Robin, your new partner. Robin is a veteran and it shows grizzled features, hard eyes, and a scuffy demeanor. Antwoch is Antwoch has taken its toll on them. I don't need to tell you, Robin, who I am. For you, Mr. Jokojo, let me introduce myself. I'm your commanding officer. Mr. Jokojo, before you start the most productive night of your life, protocol dictates that I ask you a few questions. And Robin, with your retirement coming up, you're obliged to complete an exit evaluation. When I was a rookie, we didn't have these protocols. Those were the good old days. Hmm. I don't need to be evaluated. Just let me do my job. Whatever you say, boss. Let's go with this. I'd like you, I'd like you to both answer as honestly as possible, please. Question 1. You're on leave and you visit a grocery store without your weapon. A man tries to hold up the owner. What do you do? Oh, I don't have my weapon. I'd always have my peace on me. I'd put the asshole down. <laughs> I'd do my duty as a cop and try to talk the guy down. Mm. I'd memorize the robber's face and reproduce it later for law enforcement. Mm. The last option is like the smartest one. Mm. The first one, first one kind of ignorant. I do my duties at camp and try to ask the guy down. I might get shot here and do not want to get shot. Maybe the last option happens all the time in Untouch. What am I going to do about it? I'd hide and I'd hide and pray. <laughs> Pretty in size, bored by all this and flips the page of her pad. Question two, following our raid, your partner ended up at the morgue. You get five days off. What do you do with them? I refuse them. My place is in the street, protecting the city. I'll never go south. Well, I would pray. God will be able to relieve me of the, this immense pain, I hope. I I do not know. Your question disturbs me a lot. Uh, mm. I mean, even after my partner dies, you know, work still continues. That's how life is. Mm. First one. Let's change the subject. I don't want to cry in front of the kid. Pretty shrugs. You get the impression she has heard all this before and makes a note. Question 3. Do you think there are situations where you have to take the law into your own hands? Uh, of course. Yes, if some child killer got off on a technicality, could have stand that. No, if it means helping an innocent, yes. I mean, yeah. No, no, I'm a cop, not a judge. Criticism size. Question 4. You're turned down for a promotion, unfairly. How do you react? Injustice revolts me. I'd investigate. I don't. Throwing a hissy fit isn't going to change anything. Uh, that's true. Without fairness, there's no respect. I pity the person that's in my way. Hmm. 
I'd probably investigate and wonder how oh, did that happen. What do you want me to do? This is the story of my life. Prison raises her eyebrows and turns another page. Mayoral elections are coming up. Who would you like to see elected? A farmer cup of course, an old fashioned guy who will clean this town up however he can. An honest man, a woman. <laughs> I love what they say, an honest man. I just said, a woman. <laughs> uh, probably an honest man. An immigrant to inspire others. Ferguson takes a few seconds to finish recording whatever it is she's recording. Then closes the notepad with a clock of paper. Now that's out of the way, maybe we can get on to some actual police work. But first, a question of my own. What are your first impressions of each other? You look at your partner, considering how to answer this question. You really want to know? I think I'm in love. <laughs> they seem solid. Things got a little weird back there, but I'm done with that. I had to even notice there was someone else in here. Uh, I think they seem solid. That's a solid answer. They make me wonder if I'm not ready to board the roller coaster of love again. What? It just nods to herself. Some conjecture confirmed. You have a high level of compatibility. Compatibility? I think you'll work well together. Bridgeson stands up and opens the door. Get going. You have a case at church for you, Robin. I told you about it a few minutes ago, Mr. Jokocho. I think Frank briefed you. Good luck in Untouch. You'll need it. I think I'm butchering that name. What do you pronounce it? Anti Uch? Anti Uch? Untouch? St. Margaret Police Center. The parking lot of St. Margaret Police Station. Hey, Mr. Jokojo. So you're gonna show me the ropes? Hey, Robin. You sure you're up for this, old man? Hmm. Uh, let's call him. Mind if I drive? Take the wheel. In the police car traveling to the crime scene, Agent Robin is at the wheel. Its summit, battered by a deluge of rain, its lower reaches worn by the dark waves of the ocean, its face cloaked in darkness, so stands Antoch. Like the nuns of its crumbling churches, the city of Antoch opens her arms for all who seek her out junkies and judges, heroes and hookers, villains and vagabonds. Antoch is blind. Antos does not judge. It is 1986. You've been a police officer since 6 p.m. today. You've asked for a case in the worst part of town, St. Margaret's. Perhaps because you want to tackle the evil at its source. Perhaps because it fascinates you. You'll be working together on a point murder at the Churchview Hotel on 25th Street. Okay. Churchview Hotel on 25th Street. Whatever happens, it won't be boring. St. Margaret's never disappoints. Go to our 35th Street slowly. Eh? Hey, stop. Church is on the 25th. Yeah, it's on the 25th. Say, Greenhorn, are you going to try to tell me about this area that I've been patrolling for 30 years? Okay, let's follow the direction of the cop with experience. Nah, let's not be like that. You know who briefed me? Superintendent Peterson. You think I'm making this stuff up? He's just trying to get us lost so he can get back home and gorge on donuts. <laughs> this is actually kind of funny. But let's keep it serious. Oh well. If the superintendent said it, you've got to obey orders, right? Exactly. Let's go, my nigga. I like one. Like the animation. That's cool. You're on your way to the church view hotel. The radio crackles. Video killed the radio star from Buggles. Oh, St. Margaret. Huh? Video killed the radio star from Robin. Did you see the light in the sky? Strange hovering light. You look pale, Robin. Are you okay? Hmm. Oh, St. Margaret. It's hell. I wrong righted. Ten more injustice injustices come up. Why the hell did you choose this division? 
<laughs> I chose randomly. I finished last at the cup exam and this was the this only spot left. Uh, I'm here because I want to deal with the root of the problem. I mean, uh, which one's somewhere solid? I mean, let's choose this. We've got a saying here. You don't live in St. Margaret's. St. Margaret's lives in you. Oh, I'm going to like it here. Nah, you're not going to like it actually. I don't think I'm going to like this place. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. 25th. You arrive at your destination, but not at the Churchview Hotel. It was obviously the wrong address. What? Wrong address? Wrong address? The stress of your first case, Mr. Joker Joe? I'm sorry, I've been. I was acting in good faith. If you think you know so much, you find a way. <laughs> By radio, you get an update with Frank from Central. He confirms you that Churchview is on the 52nd. Oh, obviously. There's an issue with the police station information logistic. Oh, that's why. You're back on the road. The car stops in front of the Churchview. Oh, that's why. Oh, that looks so fucking good. Animation, everything. Looks sick. You knew that St. Margaret's was a shady, gloomy place, but Churchview is a pit of misery. You wanted to see the darkest parts of Untouch. You're here, girl, there. I've been turned paid from a forensic tech, brings out an umbrella to shelter from the rain, sheeting down from the sky. It must be serious if the forensics have been called. Indeed. As you climb the dirty staircases, carefully stepping over the prone bodies of drunks, you get the strong feeling that that this case, the first of your career, could be the most important case you have ever faced. Fred from Forensics, let's see you into the victim's dirty, pitiful room. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Ah, oh, is a dead girl in bed. <laughs> a woman with the face of an angel, her neck marked with brown marks, lies on the bed. Hmm. The lab will confirm it, but it's usually asphyxiation due to strangulation. I choke her to death. You notice brown and blue marks around the neck. Shit. <laughs> That's exactly what I would say. Shit. No signs of stress. No signs of a struggle. She may have known her attacker. Blank receipt. Looks like it came from a taxi. Like, I haven't even seen anything yet. I was just a ship. No purse. No identity cards. The officer Robin search, searches the victim's pastel jacket with gloved hands. Oh, crap. <laughs> No, I can't say that anymore. Or maybe she was drugged. Okay. Uh, let's try the blank receipt. Okay. Also, oh, those are the clues. I should just check. Okay. Look what's around her neck. A Catholic cross. Yeah, that's the first thing I notice. I've been points up with a little finger at the gold cross around the victim's neck. Hmm. Crap. <laughs> Why a blank receipt? Let's begin the investigation. Mm. Why a blank receipt? Crap. This guy does a crap. God damn it. Observe the dead fly on the ground. Let's <laughs> do for jokes. You observe a dead fly on the ground. Fred put a little note right next to it. God damn it. Sheet. <laughs> we should turn her over to find clues. With gloves, you carefully turn the body over, but it rolls and almost tumbles. The only clue is an abstract one. No rigor mortis. Fucking shit. <laughs> Let's begin the investigation, alright? Let's start fucking about. Come on, Robin. We've seen everything. We're gonna see. The officers exit the room. Mm -hmm. Blank receipt. Catholic cross. 
What I'm saying is that we should ask Mario, the manager of Churchview, a few questions. Yeah, let's do it. Mario, the owner of Churchview, is sitting down behind a counter watching a tiny black and white screen. He mumbles as you approach, not looking in your direction. We take cash only in advance. <sighs> Look at this dude. Explain to me why we shouldn't suspect you of killing the young woman. Mario comes around the counter. He's in a wheelchair. Okay. Definitely could be you. Because we don't have an elevator. <laughs> We're investigating and the woman strangled up on your second floor. Do you only take cash? I'd really like to see your account book. Hmm. The young woman who was, was strangled. You know her name? Is she arrived alone? How did she get here? At what time? Hmm. I think the last one is a good question to ask. But it could be faking. That is in a wheelchair. Hmm. taking too long on this. It's just about the cash. There are shootouts happening on every street corner around, around here. And do you want to check my account? I'd say that this wheelchair is a bluff. Exactly. But if I knock it over, you'd be standing up in no time. Robin tips the wheelchair over. Mario falls to the ground. His atrophied legs suddenly reveal. You help him back to the wheelchair. Mario mutters. That he's going to file a complaint. Oh shit. So he definitely can't walk. Okay, okay. You are faking it. Let's ask the last question. Mario watches his TV not being co cooperative. She got in here in the evening. We're investigating on the woman strangled up on your second floor. You're going to ruin the spotless reputation of my establishment. Spotless, your establishment. Just take a look at the walls and the ceiling. You're right. We'll do the shootouts and send the finance audit guys over in instead. Stop playing around, Mario. Tell us what you know. Chop, chop. Hmm. I think this would be the. All I know is that your chick arrived here at 6 46 pm. Pointing to the TV. I like guest price. I know all the values by heart. From the salad bowl to the private jet. Game shows are dumb. I prefer watching men kick an inf <laughs> inflated ball around the grass. Hmm. Shit, I forgot what time she reached. Spotless. Your establishment, just take a look at the walls. Hmm, okay. Who cleans the room around here? Mario jerks his head towards a thin figure looking out of the window. This might be the guy. Adolf does that. Spotless. Your establishment. Just take a look at the walls and the ceiling. I'll pass your comments on to my cleaner. You're right. We'll do the shootouts and send finance audit guys over instead. Talk sport. This guy isn't going to give us anything else. Hmm. Hmm. Just talk sport. What? I love the tennis. Those clay courts make me think of the gladiators. Are we not entertained? Wink. You're talking to a future man here. I bet the farm on Madrid. I was a semi-finalist in the country league. Played for a chapel, but my promising career was cut short by dirty tricks. Hmm. The sport of the future is a sport where one plays one's life. But of course, I think about the boomerang. You see this car? Scar? She hides an atrocious story. Mm. John Kirov, our friends, Buckenberg. It's good, a magic story. Are you kidding me? You treat me like shit, and you think yeah, we're gonna chat about sport? Thanks. I think we've got enough. Alright, let's dip.
tell me, should we see our friend Adolf? I just bought to suggest that. Hmm. Who the hell is Adolf? Is that the cleaner? Adolf is emaciated but clean. Oh, he's a cleaner. His hands are cracked from too much washing. Oh, he stares blankly at the rain through the window and does notice your arrival. Oh, this guy has to be the killer. Say, Adolf, you need yourself some Leburn serum. What the hell is that? A bit more living space, huh? Once I've cleaned, I get sleep on the sofa. And, I, and if I'm really good, Mara gives me a candy. <laughs> gives me candy? You don't get paid? Yo, enough of this bullshit. Hi, Adolf. Have you seen how I come by earlier this evening? Adolf looks afraid. I only watch the cars and I clean. Wait, was it being serious? I've had enough rubbing. Let's take a break. Grandma used to say, sarcasm will kill and kill any nazis. <laughs> Robin, this guy is, you know, if, if he saw the killer, no cook would accept his evidence. Show me your hands. Yeah, simple. His hands are cracked from compulsive itching. He must be in some pain. There's also a tattoo on his wrist. I'm getting a sense that life has been hard on you. Did you always live here? No, before I was in the center. Okay. Robin, this guy, you know, if he's not the no, no. I've had enough. Robin, let's take a break now. No. Let's try that. A nice man came and adopted me. He brought me here. And this man, what was his name? He never told me. Yeah, let's look at that tattoo on your wrist. Can you show me the tattoo on your wrist, Adolf? Adolf shows the tattoo a crescent moon encircling two large eyes. Weird tattoo. Grandma used to say, Sarcasm will kill an easy, kill any nazis. Is your grandma nice? You said you watch the cars, see any taxes arrive? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know what a taxi is. What time did it arrive? Uh, this guy lost. You need to take care of your hands, Adolf. Is there anyone to look after you? Mario gives me candy. <laughs> what? Christoph, Adolf, a taxi. They have a sign on top that says T A X I. Mm. I think we go with this. A sign. Don't tell me I just fucking click something. You in some cars? Many. Oh. Nah. Uh, run out of questions. Shit. It's pretty. Who did it for you? Hmm. Look at this. The man who adopted me. He went into the city. It hurt. Does this tattoo mean anything? It's pretty. Alright, let's take a break. This guy's last. Max from Millennium's police station contacts you by radio. Contacts you by radio. The corpse of the motel's victim just arrived. Tell me, should we take a look at the victims in the morgue? Yeah, we should have should. The killer might be dear. <laughs> Probably somebody killed the killer. Oh fuck. Can I click uh Robin is at the wheel? The radio crackles. It's my life from Tal Talk. You arrive at the Millennium Police Station. You park in front of the Millennium District PD office. The premises are sleek, clean, and ultra modern, with organized desks and computers at every seat. You feel like a vagrant visiting this place. A vagrant? Vagrant? And yes, Max the Tiger is a coroner from the Untouched Police Department. He's a stocky guy with a generous mullet. 
he presents you the corpse of a young lady, like a chef serving a ham sandwich. Uh, kind of weird. Okay, that's her. Can he give us a time of death? Well, Fred didn't make a notation at the scene, and the readers have been running around like headless chickens. <laughs> I'll simply need more time or more clues. Hmm. So this is the famous Max Tiger that you told me about. Robin, disappointing. I know it's a long shot, but would a bug help you date the body? Hmm. Any idea on the cause of death? The bug. Or oh, the fly. Good idea. Fred might have found something. Max opens an envelope and takes a transparent sachet from the evidence pile. The fly. Okay. There's no way this fly helps. Calif what? California. California. Makes me think of the Beach Boys. But it's the name of a fly which tells us the murder happened just a few hours ago. No way. Yeah. Don't look at me. Max, you're the bro. You need the time of death. Max stays silent. Preoccupied by something. So this is the... Mm, heard that already. Where is the victim's head? Huh? Any idea of the cause of death? Hmm. Asphyxiation. Bruising and a ruptured vertebrae are consistent with strangulation. Don't tell me you're surprised. Did you bag her clothes? In the case file, I just had some underwear. And some underwear. Hmm. But she was the prostitute. And you don't know that for sure. Is there anything strange about the body? There's one thing. The skin shows a sign of trauma in certain areas. It's possible she had a tattoo removed, but it must have been a long time ago, 10 years or more. Shit. I can't make this one out. But I don't think it was. Hmm. What's a crescent moon with two eyes? This does not look like it. I wish they all could be California girls. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Mr. Joker Joe. And I want to stay in the city of shadows, rain and shit. So this is the thing. Oh no, read that already. Well, she was the prostitute who raised the victim's head. Let's try this. You raise the victim's head. Max slaps your hands and throws such god gloves into your face. Calm down, my guy. You know, even without fingerprints, Mr. Joker Joe's prime, my prime sub suspect, huh? Mr. Joker Joe's my prime suspect. <laughs> this cup solidarity, it warms my heart. Uh, it could be suicide. Can't you just take her temperature? Why oh, ask that? Okay, that's pretty disappointing. Listen, Mr. Joker Joe. It's better I say nothing than give you some bullshit that gets the wrong guy locked up, don't you think? Max, since this is my last duty, I gotta tell you, we think you're here is ridiculous. <laughs> Why can't you go for something normal, like a side party? <laughs> you're breaking my heart. This haircut gives me personality. It's popular with the ladies. Hmm. Yeah, here we are. With no time of death on a fresh one. Maybe the tiger's reputation is unfounded. Stop breaking my balls. This is St. Margaret. We get new bodies all day, every day. I'll answer your question when I know the answers. Any news from the toxicology report? She's anemic. Other than that, she's the healthiest dead person I've ever seen. The stomach is empty, so it seems her last meal was a slice of fresh air. <laughs> hey, I bought you here. I'm behind you, buddy. In the future, everybody will have mullets. Maybe we should call the Margaret Coroner. I heard he's the best. Are you kidding me? I thought that imbecile. Everything he knows. I'm the one they call when they can't find their own assholes. <laughs> Robin, 
I know it's your last day, but Jesus Christ, you are one annoying motherfucker. Tomorrow, when you're gone, I'm gonna drink a bottle of champagne and have a fucking party. But fine, fine. I'll work on your carbs now and get you your answers. Max shows you the door. Oh, it's about time, my dude. All this fucking talking. No, I think we should. I was just thinking about it, we could. What I'm saying is that we should. Or maybe. Hmm. Aunt Mario, the manager of Treasury, a few questions. Yeah, we should probably talk back to Mario. Update the commissioner, Peterson on the case. I mean, uh, she can't give us any answers. Talk to Maria in the archives. Maria in the archives or archives. Hmm. Question Simone, the person in the hotel room next to the victim. Ooh. Excellent suggestion, Officer Mr. Jokujo. Simone, how did we forget her name? You're on your way to the Churchview Hotel. Robin is at the wheel. You arrive at the Churchview Motel. You knock on the door of the neighbor in the room. 20 something, Simone has been aged by drugs. Her hands shake. Damn. <laughs> Another junkie. <laughs> uh, see, your room has this charm of an English cottage. I guess you and your customers have to have a good time playing bridge. Uh, another junkie. No, oh, that's bullshit. I just quit. Oh, really? Ma'am, we're investigating a murder that took place in the room next door. A murder? Whoa, where? Sure. How long have you been clean? Three minutes. Who's your dealer? See. <laughs> okay, let's leave this a bit. Let's. Clients, uh, bridge clients, I don't know what you mean, but what I'm doing is legal, uh, I think. Wait, she is a drug dealer? The room next door. Oh, when? <laughs> Sigh. Alright, let's try the drug dealer. I'm telling you, I just quit. Wait, who are you again? Who are you again? We're going, Mr. Jokujo. Why? You're higher than Bob Marley on spring break. We need to take you downtown and ask you a few questions. Two police officers put Simone in. Two police officers put Simone in handcuffs. As she protests feebly, her body weakened by deprivation. A car takes her to St. Margaret Police Station. It was the right decision. You should never let people walk over you. You should check her for tats. She probably have a tattoo. Uh, it was the right decision. You should never okay. Me. No. No, I think we should. Tell me, should it be? What would you say to? Mm, Alright. Let's ask Mario, the manager, some questions. Mario is sat behind the counter watching a tiny black and white TV. Alright, let's pull up on this guy again. You're right. Uh, I love, <laughs> I love tools that you manage his money for him. That's true. Your client in the next room, Simon. She's a little high, right? And I'm not talking about a pilot's license. Uh, that's funny. It's good, Adolf. I used to. A guy used to bring something for his food and accommodation each month. I never took anything. I'm an honest guy. Mm. He used to come. He doesn't come anymore. Not for the last two months. Sounds like it could be him. But I'm a nut. But I'm not heartless. I feed him and give him somewhere to sleep. And he makes the beds. Uh, fair enough. Who came to hand over the money? Hmm. A guy called... Uh, a guy called Serge Chenes. He was well-dressed. Not rich. He looks after the entire hotel in, in exchange for a bed, for a bed and candy. Out of the kindness of your heart, you're too generous, Mario. <laughs> That's what I tell myself. <laughs> Got anything else about Sergey? If you see, if you see him, tell him he's three months overdue with interest. Oh, you're crying to the next room, Simone. She's a little high, right? 
and I'm not talking about a pilot license. I don't like to judge. I'm open-minded. Uh, and so, Minister Open-Minded, you know who Simone supplies? Jugs under this roof? I'd never allow it. Thanks. I think we've got enough. Mm. Alright, we'll do the shootouts and send the finance all the guys over instead. Mm, let's go with this. Hey, listen. You're always not here to check out my accounts. I just want to help. Mr. Jokujo, let's go. Mm. Mr. Jokujo, let's go. Let's, okay, right, let's. We won't lose anything if we. Okay, right, let's. Hmm, I'll do the commissioner. No, talk to Maria about the in the archives go over the case with Simone at the station mm -hmm. I think she'll go and talk to Simone yeah let's talk to her a bit more there's no way it could be like her next door neighbor and did you hear she dying <laughs> you're on your way to St. Margaret everything's at the Robin is at the wheel Let's talk about Adolf's mentor, Serge Jenis. Jenis. Or Jens. Serge Jens. Robin, did you see the light in the sky? Strange over light. Uh, did you see it? You look pale. Robin, are you okay? Mm. We should try to learn more about this guy. And how do we do that? Look in the phone book. I knew a Serge. He ran a more modern art gallery. The type of place where they sell you a sink painted pink for the price of a house. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Jokocho, you really don't understand art, do you? Hmm. One day, I'll show you my watercolors, Robin. You'll be amazed. I knew Sergei. He was a pro wrestler. They called him the 10 tonne bomb on account of his finisher move. <laughs> or oh, 10 ton bomb. Oh. And how do we do that? Mm, I think it could be the same surge. Also, 10,000 ton bomb, ton catch. Mm -mm. I think it could be the same surge. You could ask Maria at the archive service. Mm, let's move on. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. You are at the safe market police station. In front of the in front of the interrogation room, you are stopped by Simone's lawyer. My client is obviously not in good shape. She needs time to sober up a bit. <laughs> it's a joke. I am myself drugged and I feel like a charm. <laughs> Let's try that. Fought this. What? There's no way. Our lawyer's already there. That's some bullshit. Hmm. See what Fred from forensic analysis has to tell us. Hmm. Should check back on Fred. Hmm. As you go, I should call Maria. In the basement of the Antwerp police station, behind shelves running under the weight of dusty evidence archives, archives, Maria is tapping on a brand new IBM. She's wearing a black leather jacket with big hoop earrings. Pushing aside a column of floppy disk, she calls out to you. Over here. Ask your questions and don't touch anything. You meet Fred, the guy from the lab, joking with Maria. Mm, damn dog. Maybe you want us to come back later. I see that you work hard with some logistics. It's no surprise that it's a struggle to solve business. Fraternization is a professional misconduct, man. Do you think this is the 1960s? Hmm. Hmm. I see that you work hard with social logistics. It's no surprise that it's a struggle to solve business. Respect Fred and Maria. Mr. Jogojo, they have more seniority than you and would have many things to teach you. Ah, uh, fuck. Nice, Mr. Jogujo. 
you'll see that magically analyzes are much faster than the inspector knows how to act nicely. <laughs> so come to me to be your best friend. Pushing Fred with annoyance and more for punishment than a reward. If we all get back to <laughs> if we all can get got back to work. Mm, right, uh, <laughs> Fred leaves the room. Oh shit. Oh, so this is a computer. In five years we'll have robots doing all this bullshit. And we can just stay home and watch t stay home watching TV. Yeah. And we'll be driving hover cars too. Uh what are we talking about? I show the picture of the victim. You show Mario the picture of the victim. Mario taps the third keyboard. No match. Nothing in the missing. Person's report. Mario, could you check Mr. Jokujo's bank account? Sure. If I had a good reason. This is a long shot, but a guy called Serge's chain may have adopted a child named Adolf. You got anything on either of those? Hmm. Mario taps away at her keyboard. Got him. Adoption record is 19 years old. I did have a death certificate for Fergie dated two months ago. Maybe back later, Maria. Hmm. So the guy died. Computer just phase. These stupid gadgets will go out of fashion soon. Oh hell no. Nah. What was the cause of death? The printer winds up. It stutters. Out a coroner's report. Report. What? Five. Natural cause. Ah, Mr. Shokujo, we have to go. Whoa. What was that? Max from Millennium's police station contacts you by radio. Contacts you by radio. So, after an exhaustive inquiry, we can date the time of death to between 6 and 7 p.m. Okay. 6 and 7 p.m. Hmm. Max, I've, Max, I've been harsh with you. You're the best, really. Hmm. What I'm saying is that we should let's hmm. take a look at the victim in the morgue. The morgue. Oh, that's the same dead girl. Hmm. Let's check Fred. You surprised me. Okay, lead the way. The lab of the Antwerp police station is a dispiriting place, especially at night. With his neon light glaring coldly on the sterile floor, Fred looks up from his microscope and smiles. Alright, Fred, what you got? If it isn't the dynamic duo at St. Margaret, I hope I did it. keep you waiting. What can I do for you? Any clues in the crime scene? That is one fancy tie, Fred. Nah. Any clues in the crime scene? I've got a bus to give this some partial information. If I knew where she stopped, I could tell you where it, where it was issued. You know, we know she stopped at Church View. You think I'm an idiot? No bus is stopped there. Not since the riots. Hmm. Anything else? This is one fancy time, Fred. She doesn't have car. She doesn't have a car. And we found a blank receipt in the room. Apart from a cab. What else could it be? Hmm. Exactly. I see. Let me find a list of cab companies in Antwerp. Fred retrieves a dusty phone book from a filing cabinet, replete with illustrations. The companies listed are uh, Pativ Grast on Blind Street, and M Transport Limited in St. Margaret, Raja in a nameless dead end on Sun Plaza, Black Cabs on the Docks. Elite coaches, Untouch, Booty Avenue, <laughs> anything else? Her purse only had the beer essentials, nothing from the assailant. There's nothing, there's enough genetic material in the carpet to repopulate the earth. That is one fancy tie for it. Lay off the tie. Thanks for it. You have been useful. Miss Joke Cho, let's go. Hmm. We have the black cubs. I think that is the place we have to search. The black cubs. 
Because it was a taxi. Find information on Raja. Yeah, visit the NML Limited Company. NM Limited Company. Have a look at the elite coaches. Inspect passive graphs cabs. Yeah, I met you, partner. I think cabs and taxis are the same thing. You're on your way to the you're on your way to the ashes. Robin is at the wheel. The radio crackles. Psycho killer from talking heads. The party grassed taxi company is a vacant lot haunted by trailers in the south central Zarai. A woman with black eyes with huge silver bracelets on the uterus opens the gate. <sighs> fie, fie. I know your cops. You want a taxi? Did anybody from your company drop a client off in Churchview recently? Mm. Not possible. We only do a shut service between towns. Hmm, is that right? There should be little should be a little traffic here, no? Yes, but do you know why nobody bothers the gyps bothers the gypsies? We're the poorest and also first inhabitants of the city. Where are your taxi bus? Chapel. Only one we have. Thanks. I think we've got enough. Mm. Zara, nice name. Russia. Romanian. Romanian. Gypsy. Pative grass means honor and diligence. My family is older than Antoch. Poverty is, poverty is relative. Lady, give me a little something so we don't search your taxes. <laughs> Are, you ex Are you extorting money? From the gypsies, Gaja, you're crazy. You're crazy. I'll give you the what the fuck? What if the fuck is some kind of gypsy delicacy? I'll pass. <laughs> oh, oh. It's the evil eye, be cursed, policeman. He only carry gypsies, right? He don't discriminate. Everybody's welcome on our buses. Mm. Jesus. A curse is the last thing you need. Can you remove it? Of course, but it will cost you. Mr. Jokto, let's go. Come on, man. I had more questions to ask. Hmm. Back to boss of Black Taxi a few questions. Yeah, that's where I wanted to go. You come up with some good ideas when you put your mind to it. that I'm supposed to click. You're on your way to the, to the docks. <clears throat> I fucking lose my voice. Robin is at the wheel. Robin, the Robin. Did you see that light in the sky? Oh, that same sky. Oh, let's click it. It was a billboard for Pelican's Casino. Get a grip. <laughs> it's a ship, man. We've been seeing more and more of them lately. I don't believe in anything except my word and my gun. <laughs> if aliens are real, why do they only capture inbred hillbillies? Oh. In those aliens land, it's all over. We'll be like the Indians when they when the British came. We're going to Alamo or Asses. <laughs> As angels fly shallower minds ascend, for all is found at journey's end, where blood doth fall, flow. Like Olin's chalice, our, our paths will meet in Daybreak's palace. What? Urban, don't take this the wrong way, but you need to lay off the sauce. <laughs> I thought some poetry might lighten the mood. You arrive at the Black Cap's company. Hmm. Ah, uh, Edgar. Edgar. The owner of the Black Taxi Company. A small black man with a large flat top haircut waddles between the car garages. Paperwork in hand. Hmm. You're looking for a taxi that drops someone off at Churchview Hotel. 
Glad to see cops aren't the only ones who work hard this time of night. Since how long do you work here? Mm. Let's go to the church view hotel. What do you take me for? A fucking airline or some mat? Glad to see cops aren't the only ones who work hard this time of night. I'll take your word for it. Because with all due respect, you don't see the cops too much on the streets of St. Margaret. No matter what time of day. Hmm. We'd be happy. We'd be happy if you could just tell us all the taxi that went to church for you. Mm. Let's go to the first one. Edgar looks in his notebook. He might have this somewhere. One sec. It's kind of the dream trap, isn't it? Because between you and me, having your ass sitting in a car all day is really a lazy thing. Your jokes, your jokes, your jokes don't make me laugh. You guys are fucking cops. I'll file a complaint. You aren't a very cooperative old man. Now I wonder just how many illegals you've got working for you. You want a list of all your employees' names and addresses. I would like to officially apologize to you if our little teasing has upset, has upset you. Nah, fuck that. Yeah, give me names and addresses. Edgar tears off a page from his paperwork and hands it to you. Hmm. Since how long do you work here? I took over the family business. Black Cubs was founded half a century ago. Hmm. You're not very cooperative, old man. Now I wonder just how many illegals you got working for you. See? I knew we could be friends. <laughs> right, let's go with this one. Edgar gives you a furious look. I would like to officially apologize to you if our little teasing has upset you. So be it. I said nothing happened besides. Do you give me permission to speak frankly with you? I have something to tell you. But hey, your cops. All that you might get anger. I understand. People without a sense of humor. When I have a low libido, I can't laugh anymore. Oh shit. Alright, my friend for 20 years. What about your colleague? I haven't laughed since 1978. Since then, I've been called the stupid perk. Alright, so here's what I think. I think the Antwerp police are racist, violent, and do nothing to help citizens. In fact, I never laughed. I'm a child of Satan. What? You think I'm impressed with, your, with you grabbing your gun? My father would bet me whenever I smiled. A sign of intelligence. That he did not tolerate. Your colleague's about to hit me. And you want me to do a psychoanalysis on top of that? I would offer you an extra gift. Wrap in with that. But on my taxes, I already pay your ill-earned paychecks. Mm. You're not very cooperative, old man. Now I wonder just how many illegals you got working for you. Let's go there. Mm, no idea. Thanks, Edgar. We'll be going now. Mm. Edgar, you don't know me at the station. They call me the hound. I'll be staying right here and inspecting every detail of your account, your employees, everything down to the pressure of your tires and your shitty taxes. Mm. You know who likes to laugh? Child killers. That's just the clue I used to catch them. Mm. Let's go to the first one. What do you want? A backhander? <laughs> right? A backhander? Oh shit. The threaten. Hmm. I'm saying that we should. Alright, let's go to somewhere else. Talk about the investigation. Here, a visit to NM Limited Company. Have a look to the elite coaches. Take a look at the victim in the morgue. Hmm. You read, my, you read my mind, partner. You're on your way to the casino. Rambrin is at the wheel. The radio crackles. It's my life from Tal Talk. You arrive at Untouched Booty Casino. Alright. You arrive at you arrive at the Untouched Booty Casino. 
luxurious limousines are situated outside the luxurious casino and touch booty and touches booty Jervas near to you from inside suit you couldn't afford with a month's salary a woman in a skirt suit greets you behind a glass I'm Donia welcome to elite coaches do you have a reservation we want to know if one of one of your drivers dropped any Body off in charge for hotel recently. Hmm. I'd like to hire a limo. Got any in gold? Hmm. Church view hotel, sir. Would you be so kind as to share the address? 52 Street in St. Margaret. Donia gives a pained expression and presses her notebook against her chest. I'm sorry. <laughs> we do accept phrase outside the millennium. The streets are too narrow in the old city. Mm. <laughs> All our models comes in black as standard, but if you give us five days, notice we can personalize a vehicle for your occasion. Mm, really? Narrow? Is that your way of saying you don't serve poor neighborhoods? Everybody knows the entity has some social issues. Hmm. <laughs> Bro, we're talking too much, man. <laughs> you know there's a tradition in, in Antouch of taxi companies giving presents to cops. You won't get any bribes from us. <laughs> we're with the Pelican. Hmm? Who's the Pelican? Somebody who is afraid of you. Oh, shit. Mr. Jokujo, let's go. Alright. Uh, now we think we should... Hmm. Find information on Roger. You're on your way to the Millennium. Robin is at the wheel. You arrive at the Millennium solely. Soul Hill Plaza. Roger is at the is at a dead end. Other Indians are crouching around a pot of Buriana, warming their hands against the heat. One of them, Amish, gets up. He has a white shirt and a and dark green glasses. You looking for a cab? We got plenty. A little more expensive this time of night. You interested? Hmm. Smells good. <laughs> Smells good. Is that curry? Doesn't drag in rickshaws tire you out? The NFU guys drop someone off at the church view. It's a hotel in St. Margaret. Hmm. Amish, turn to, Amish turns to his friends and exchanges a few words. No, it was us. This dragon rickshaws tire you out. Huh? Much less than listening to you. <laughs> that was quick. Don't you have records to check? Amish rummages around inside a nearby rickshaw and you stop him. This is clearly not the kind of cab you're looking for. Thanks. I think we've got enough. Alright, let's do it, let's do it. Let's talk about the investigation. Okay. You see this list? Uh, you seen this list? Driving taxis in St. Mary isn't exactly what the rich kids dream of. Hmm. Cost of the record. Hmm. I don't know anyone on this list. This money intrigues me. If I was a woman, I'd like thing too. I'd be more comfortable with a woman driving the taxi. The victim flagged on a taxi. She wouldn't have known he was a female driver until she got in. Vincent Kapoix? Now I'm not being racist, but these fucking Polacks are everywhere. Should I click on? Because... Okay, 
I guess I should. Let's go with Joe Muller. Muller. That's some chairman, don't you think? Mm. All right. Well, what's that French Creole? Hmm. Let's try Gabar. Sign. No, oh, there's a name that stands out. Look. Send started at 6.20 at the VHS store and went to the church view. We need to talk to him. Oh, really? This sin. This sign, Singe, will have some answers. You didn't have to say fucking bollocks. <laughs> Let's look at where we're going. All right, let's do Let's dip, let's dip. I think you've seen all we need. What I'm saying is that, okay, all right. We're making progress now, let's. Eh? Or maybe. Where is the. Is that guy? Singe. Uh, visit the video rental store. Okay. You're on your way to that shoes. Robin is at the wheel. Hmm. Robin, imagine if we catch this murderer and he's acquainted on a technicality. Robin, can we go to the drugstore? I need my vitamins. In the case of. In the. In that case, Mr. Jogucho, you need to listen to your heart and do what needs to be done. Killers walking free makes me sick. I'd find them and take the law into my own hands. It'd be any. It wouldn't be any of our businesses if some peace and love judge wants to release a violent killer. That's on him. Mm. If justice doesn't push to punish them, God will. He never lets bad people get away with anything. Mm. If an innocent is released, but I don't trust his face, I'm still gonna give him hell. You arrive at the VH VHS door. You stop at the end of 47th on the first floor of a two-story building is a sign proclaiming Star VHS, flashing with neon and pink and blue. With neon pink and blue. The store is empty, but the manager, bald mustachioed man wearing a badge with a with a writing sheriff, welcomes you with a wave. Welcome. <laughs> did you see a young man walking a did you see a young woman taking a taxi from outside your store today? Yeah, that's the first question. A young woman, hmm, let me think. Hmm. A young woman in a taxi, you say. Um, mm, no, your badge, you've misspelled it. It should be an S instead of a C. No, I haven't. It's my name, Sheriff. Oh, shit. You really took your time answering there, old guy. <laughs> I'm looking for a good movie. Okay, I've seen enough VH <laughs> VHS tips for one day. Uh, let's try that. Oh, uh, well, hmm. you asked me a question and I, um... <laughs> I was just looking back through the day in my head, you see? Sheriff, thanks for everything. Do you want to rent a movie? Hmm. Hmm. Got any action movies? Terminator. I'm looking for something a bit lighter in tone. How about Beverly Hills Cop? Something a bit more realistic. Scarface. I prefer something with a touch of sci-fi. The thing. Mm. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. There's no way we never get anything from that guy. See what Fred from Forensic Analysis has to tell us. Huh. Go ahead, Officer Robin. Alright. You're on your way to St. Margaret. Robin is at the wheel. The radio crackles. This radio always crackling, man. <laughs> Our host from madness. You arrive at the St. Margaret Police Station. 
You're back under the white neons of the lab. Red pretends to be busy so that you don't disturb him as usual. A cop took her to a video rental on the 47th. Red's face lights up. You know that for certain. Nice work. He takes a magnifying glass and scrutinizes some figures. In that case, she must have taken the line from Sun Plaza. That is one fancy tie, Fred. Still on a bow, dam. Thanks, Fred. You've been very useful. Mr. Joker Joe, let's go. Let's step, bro. Let's step. Mm. Okay, right. Let's take a look at the victim. Inspect the Soleil Plaza. Uh, although we really have updated commission, is it? She can chill until we get some real clothes. You're on your way to the millennium. Robin is at the wheel. The really crackles. Don't you want me from Human League? You arrive at the millennium, Soleil Plaza. Now we're back here. It's midnight, and the Sun Plaza is almost empty. A few trees, traces of its intense daytime activity remain. Besuited traders leaving, bleary eyed from their glasses towers. Tipsy tourists walking waywardly through ancient ruins. Sour faced clerks taking stock in empty eh, taking stock in empty mall stores. The victim took the bus here and was coming from Chapel. Let's take a look around. I'll keep my eyes peeled. You notice a minivan parked outside a fried chicken joint. A, a cross is bolted onto the side. A cross is bolted onto the side. Chapel's Christian Brotherhood. You sure and look with your partner and pull up nearby. The beige van looks second hand with a chipped paint and a dented hood. You notice someone sleeping inside, so you tap on the glass. She sits up, rubbing her eyes, and rolls down the window. Mm. Not the best idea to sleep in a vehicle. Too much from St. Margaret, ma'am. We don't have much money. Besides, we're under the protection of the Lord. <laughs> You're parked illegally, ma'am. I need to see your license and registration. The woman rummages around in her glove box and hands you the documents. You scrutinize the ID and see her name is Lorraine. There's an address in Chapel. The van is registered to Christian Friends of Chapel, a religious fraternity. Both papers are clearly in order. Who's we? There's eight of us. We came off from Chapel. Are the other seven in the boat? They're staying with huh? parishioners. Parishioners in the city. What brings you to the big city? None of that explains why you're counting sheep in a minibus. Mm -hmm. I should already explain that. We are attending the annual seminar of the faithful. We try to make it every year. Mm, that's why. Come up. Praise God. Go home. That's all. The seminar was just for the morning. We decided to spend the afternoon seeing the sights. Okay. Now that explains where counting sheep's not fun. My friend went to take care of something in the city, but she hasn't come back yet. I'm waiting for her. Which way did your friend go? She caught a bus after the seminar. We were supposed to head back at four, so she should be back by now. Hmm, let me get this straight. What if your group goes missing and you don't call the cops? <laughs> Show the victim's photo. Wait, there's no way she... Hmm? You showed the victim's photo. Is this woman you're waiting for? Lauren takes the picture, looks at it closely, and starts to shake. She sobs, stifling the sound with her hand over her mouth, and starts crying. Passers by glance over the amused curiosity of untouched types. The answer seems obvious, at least. The woman's reaction should, would be pretty strange otherwise. The woman answers her question between gaps of shock and distress. What's your friend's name? Cosmina Sniff. Cosmina Kojorak. 
Robin seems shot by Lauren's answer. He turns white and becomes short of breath, leaning on the van to steady himself. Let me get this straight. Robin, are you okay? You look like a Buddhist in an abateur. Cosmina. That's a new one on me. Who is she? Polak? It's Romanian. What business did Cosmina have been untouched? She said she was meeting up with family. Robin, are you? Uh, did anyone have a grudge against her? <laughs> Cosmina, oh no. Who could wish harm on an angel? Everybody in chapel is going to mourn her loss. Did Cosmina live in chapel? Was she a Christian like you? She accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior. She had a heart of gold. Gave as much as she could to charity. Mm. Just let me get this straight. I went to the St. Margaret station at 6. They said they couldn't find a missing person's report till she was missing for 24 hours. Thanks. I think we've got enough. Hmm. Rabin, you, you okay? You look like a Buddhist. Oh, let's try this. Yeah, I'm fine. Just the name reminds me of something. If you know something, then speak now. I'll forever hold your peace. Not here. We'll talk about this later. Hmm. I'll be where we're going. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Talk about the investigation. Excellent. I knew Cosmina. Urban looks bleak. You knew her like you bumped Uglies. She's your sister. There's a family resemblance. An old case. Well, what else? Don't leave me in suspense. Let's go this. One of my first cases this continues, she was suspected of killing a young man. Uh, what was his name? Thomas Tobias Tony. Thomas, I think. How could you not recognize her? She was just under your eyes. Mm. Good news is there must be a file about her in her archives. Mm. Thomas, you got a last name? A motive? The investigation hit a dead end because she had a watertight alibi. Maybe you're just a crappy cop. Do you remember the alibi? Cosmin I knew was a 15-year-old chunky who had gone off the rails. Seems she had a change of heart. Mm. Not really. Mm. Bukeleta was the one who questioned her at the time. Officer Bukeleta, he is the Millennium Commission commissioner now maybe you're just a crappy cop <laughs> let's get back at it all right because if evolution is another mystery to solve maybe the commissioner will enjoy discussing with ghosts from the past turns out it's thomas not thomas eastern european it's got to be a file let's ask maria looks like everybody else has a file better take a look at mine <laughs> Are those memories coming back? The plot thickens. Who would have guessed you knew the girl from the first start? Tell me, shouldn't we challenge the book about Kelato's memory at Millennium Police Station? Hmm. Commissioner Buckleta Glassy shouted. Huh? Shuttered her office is blocked by an energetic young woman, Lieutenant Grady. Where are you two going? Mm. You the cops are beautiful here. Do you cast models? We're all from Millennium here. Life is easier. But don't get me wrong. I respect St. Margaret BD. We're here to see the commissioner. Yep. Get out of the way. You have to come back. Tomorrow, he's only here during the day. Oh, that's why. Showing Cosmina's picture. You ever see this girl before? Sure, she was here this morning. Damn, is she dead? Hmm, shit. We're from St. Margaret. Everything is so classy here. All this, uh, what was she doing here? 
we're actually we're trying to retrace our steps okay she was lonely i have to see the commissioner they talked for 10 minutes or so then she left what state was she in anything unusual no seemed a bit distracted maybe stumbled over some newspapers but nothing out of the ordinary hmm so you were here this morning, but you are still here now. Why the long shift? Mm. We're an amber alert. There's been a VIP kidnapping. Can we take a look in the commissioner's office real quick? Would you let one of us look around in your office? Offices while you're while you were away? Mm. <laughs> Must be the wife of, wife of someone important for you guys to be running 24 hour custody. Hmm. Mm. We're from St. Margaret. Our business sneaks a look in book Kelleta's office. Losing a greedy stops rubbing. Nice try. We said tomorrow, remember? Really? Why not join us for a day? Just because Millennium is rich and clean doesn't mean it's perfect. We have our fair share of rubbing of problems here too. Both sell it all. Bukeleta. Bukeleta. He had a good commissioner. Outstanding. When he becomes mayor, it will be our loss. But the city's gain. Mm. Watch the newspaper pile. A stock of newspaper is on a, a table. One shows commissioner Bukeleta. Bukeleta. Making a speech with the mention. Bukeleta winner in the polls. Mm. Right, and the other department will get showered with funding. Take a look around. Kojak, we have everything we need. It's you geniuses down in St. Margaret that are gonna benefit. Take the newspaper. You take a copy of the newspaper. Must be the wife of someone important for you guys to be running 24 hour custody. It's the Pelican's, it's the Pelican's son. Hmm, who's the pelican? Is this some kind of big bird? <laughs> it's not like we're not doubles. It might be back later. Alright, let's dip, let's dip. She's not letting us into the office. Like, no way. <laughs> Go ahead, Officer Robin. I'm starting to have serious doubts about Bosalata. It's a bit early to say no. I have the same intuition. This evening becomes terribly exciting. Do not you think? Huh? Do not you think? Don't you think? Oh, probably that. I'm cunning like a fox. Trust me. Fuck yeah. We make a great team. I almost have tears in my eyes. <laughs> Let's find out what is said about this guy among the cops. Peterson will probably guide us. Hmm. I hate this shrew, but we should probably talk about it with Peterson. Hmm. Yeah, we need to talk to her now. Let's talk to Mario in the archives. Alright. Let's head to Mario. Might be on to something. You're on your way to save Margaret. Robin is at the wheel. You arrive at the St. Margaret police station. Mm -hmm. You return into the elaborate basement of the archives. What was Serge's occupation? Serge was a, huh? a psychic teacher at MU. No, physics. Is that for physics? <laughs> Physics teacher at MU, the university dean could tell you more. Her name is Bianca Chaperone. A Chaperone. Maria, can you find anything on Cosmina Condia? Anything about a girl? Maria taps away her keys and seems surprised by the search result. No criminal record. No, Laka, what do you mean? It's impossible it was a little delinquent well known to us. She was hanging out with 
the Gang of Slavs. I only have the name of an agent of the mini frame of the interior. Do you want me to contact him? Hmm. Hmm. Do you want me to contact him? Yes, contact this agent to learn more about Cosmina. It seems you have a lisp. Computers are just a phase. These stupid gadgets will go out of fashion soon. Oh, come on, lay off that joke. Yes, contact this agent to learn more about Cosmina. I take care. I take care of it. And I join you as soon as I have the information. Okay, that's all. Have you ever dealt with him? Not really. He's a great chief of the millennium. Just as crazy as saying he does not trust if I have only heard of her good about it. About it if it can help you. Hmm. Okay, thank you, little computer genius. Alright, let's step. Tell me, should we Yeah. Let's update Peterson on the case. Commissioner Peterson is a grey haired woman, but with hands swift enough to run through a cluster of files and tough enough to deliver a right hook. She raises tired eyes towards you with a look that suggests you will tire her even further. <laughs> um, the commissioner turns to Robin. I received a complaint, Robin. A handicapped person claims you knocked him out of a chair in front of witnesses. What the fuck has gotten into you? Lies and more lies. Maher is up to his neck. I just want to apply some pressure, Commissioner. <laughs> it was part of a scientific approach. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Robin. What the hell is all this? The day before you retire, you decide to attack a disabled guy. <laughs> It may be your <coughs> Jesus Christ, Robin. What the hell is all this? The day before you retire, you decide to attack a disabled guy. Maybe you're the one who needs to need his legs broken. This is a real beauty. I promise you. I'll get this one firmed. I've had a complaint from the witnesses you questioned, Edgar. You laughed at him for nothing. You, 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 you humiliated him. He says with witnesses, anything to say before the press crowds up your our asses. Question one. We didn't you, why, why didn't you fire the officers immediately? He insulted us first. It's a trap to def defame the police. <laughs> yes, with that. It's true. I don't deny it, but it was stupid that, and I'm sorry. <laughs> you stupid motherfucker. The press is going to eat you alive, and I will serve you to them on a platter. They're going to study your demise in the academy, and you both deserve it. Fucking hell. So this one is beautiful. I promise you, I'll have it framed. I heard a call from the guy at Raja Saxi. He claims that you made inappropriate remarks towards him. Please tell me you're not that fucking stupid. Your son is Raja. They all do the same to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Captain. I just think this case is getting on top of me. <laughs> they all look the same to me. It won't happen again. <laughs> it will happen again, Captain. Wilson looks down her nose at you considering... Consider this an official warning. The case converges at Bucelata. And you want a search warrant to pay him a visit? You've been here long enough to know. Busselton, is he solid? Hmm. Princeton inspects your fire. I see where you're going with this. If you want my approval, you have it. But listen to me first. Your file is empty. You'll be shot down and I'll go down with you. 
you need serious evidence to convict and such darling and future mayor let's shoot the fish i'm looking forward to closing my first case yes sir the commissioner grabs her phone and gets a search warrant from Buseleta. she gives you a look fire filled with gravity be ready flip each stone evaluate each clue when you confront Buseleta, there will be no turning back if you look at your partner, this crazy night will soon come to an end. Pretty soon we're stuck. You expose the situation to the commissioner. God, let me think. Regarding Busadato trying to talk with his and Torch trying to get to know him a little better. I start with different police stations and then in the Millennium District. You know the victim was at the VHS store before she died. Yeah. The owner must know something. Push him a bit further on the topic. As I'm saying, I wish I question that guy a bit more. Did you talk to Blank? The dean of the university surge he used to teach on? We didn't even get to meet that guy either. Well, the junkie you've put in jail. Did you interview her? She should be sober by now. Ah, uh, exactly. You thank her. A little embarrassed. You know that if you abuse her, help. Your career will suffer. Oh shit. You've been here long enough to know. Baselto, is he solid? You think you can get to where he is by clicking your wheels and wishing? He dedicated his whole, his whole life to Untouch. And I respect that. Alright. I'm out. Peace. You leave the office with a sigh. Frank from Central Park. Huh? Frank from Central parked at your side and drops his window. I have an incomprehensible message from Maria, the pretty girl in the archives. She says she made an appointment with a Homeland Security officer, a John Smith. Is this a joke? Anyway, he was to come. He was to come to Saint Margaret, but he reminded Maria that the matter is over and that he will not move for anything. He hands you a paper. Here's the number, just in case. I recognize the devotion of our fellow ministers. Hmm. <laughs> there are some who work for the peace of the streets, and there are some who work for the careers. Yeah, it's not really helping. Son of a bitch. Yeah, let's go with this. Frank, huh? That moves by south. Has quite a reputation among his colleagues. Grady could help you understand why. Hmm. You don't think that we should close this business once and for all at Buseleta? Hmm. Alright, let's fucking go. Let's close this business. You're on your, you're on your way to the casino. Robin is at the wheel. The radio crackles. Relax. From Frankie goes to Hollywood. As a cop, I forbid you to wear a walk, man. Those things make you deaf. It's not gonna kill me. You're just an old dinosaur, intimidated by our suits and our gadgets. Okay, it's wank. It's wanky that makes you deaf. Robin, <laughs> based on my success with ladies, my hearing should be just fine. <sighs> what are you listening to? I'm all about jungle. On Saturdays, I dye my hair gold, dress in white, and do the robot to some sick beat. My jam is ska. Uh, silence it, yeah. Silence. Ooh. When you're tired of the, when you're tired of radio, you're tired of life.
when you're tired of radio you're tired of life at least there are no adverts i heard that in the future cars will have tv uh, the future future may have Antus lives in a wonderful property in millennium's green heights overlooking the bay beyond the glass towers of the business district the, you park by the cut edge and walk by an illuminated pool in the garage a black SUV waits like an animal lurking in the shadows. The door is open. The senator sitting, sits in the big couch of his living room. He raises his eyes to you but says nothing. On the table in front of him, some ID papers, amongst which you can see a photo of Cosmina. The captain of Millennium Seas seems overwhelmed and ex exhausted. Robin. Isn't it ironic that of all the cops, you're the one coming down here? Hmm. Each human action has its own dose of irony, for whatever knows the secret rules of the world. I see that 15 years at St. Margaret made you a philosopher. <laughs> I suppose you know why we're here. Yes, you've been quick. Now is the time where you explain to us why you're you're a nice guy deep inside <laughs> you are brave crabs the mirror is a figurehead of pelican i'm not motivated by the pursuit of power you saw what i did with the captain of the millennium millennium i wanted to do the same with the town by killing people husband is a fucking ungrateful i cover her for conscience again Kanchansky, and she comes back a thousand years after the fact to ease her conscience a, a few days before the campaign. This dumb moron is going to make Untouch fall. Cosmina was the dregs of Untouch, and she became a saint. It's the dream of any cop who locks away a bad guy. You should speak better for her of her. You are right. Why kill Cosmina? You could have bribed her. This gun saw good or something. She refused to listen. I'm under heavy pressure. I followed her all day. Acting out seemed easy to me. I felt right. So you gave a fake alibi for Cosmina. She killed Thomas Kanchaski. Of course I did. Forensic proofs were obvious. But we had a deal. I would cover for her. I would cover her. She would make Torcock and the Slav gang go down. An excellent deal. You felt right to take one's life. This this chick would have been killed sooner or later by Tarka. Her retreat to chapel, her redemption, her fifteen extra fifteen extra years of living, she owed it. She owed them to me, so I took them back. Hmm. Falsifying the conscious case, you've not only cheated justice but also prevented parents from mourning. It was not ideal. Okay. Where did I go? We're running. Thanks. We like it. Enjoy. Not okay? Yes. Thanks. Okay. You don't want to go by this, sir. No. Let's finish record this. You don't have to cut this out. They end up cut this out. Right, it was not ideal. Okay, fuck. But you were there, Robin. We need to stop this gang. So, what do we do with you? The senator regards you both with crocodilian eyes. Some deep calculation is taking place in his mind. It seems we have to have. Huh? It seems we have come to a moment of decision, gentlemen. The way I see it, you have a choice to make. A choice? No, it's not going to play like that. We're taking you down. There's no choice to make here. You're going to pay for what you did? Yeah, you seem way too confident, but sell it mm. Let's not play games here. I know exactly how much evidence you have on me. You're bluffing, but sell You've got no idea what we have on you. Who's your source? What did they tell you? Bullshit, you have no way of knowing what we know. Mm. 
Vasilita laughs. I have ears in St. Margaret. I'm not some gangster you can push around. I can't believe this. I guess I should have expected you to know everything. This is untouched after all. Our colleagues cause our prime suspect to share the evidence. Why am I not surprised? Gusalta has a mocking smile. When I heard they were putting you two jokers on the case, I laughed so hard I spat my coffee out. The truth is, you've got nothing. Your proofs is nonsense. Your investigation is at your image, without depth. There is, of course, another way. I give a shit about you, your other way, Mr. Joker Joe. I say we call this in right now. He's wasting our time, Robin. We didn't come all this way to make a deal now. Mm, true. I urge you to leave and forget everything. If you want to go to trial, you regret it. I'm saying it as a cop to another cop. I'm going to be mayor. I'll purify the city, the tough way, and the gentle way. The pelican, the Mero, all of these crooks, they're going to understand that here they will have more to lose that earn and they will do will be doing their business elsewhere. I will have ten times more enemies. My past catches upon me. Some guys will open my file and come lock me away. Same result if you take me now. Except that in the meantime, we would have saved the city, you and me, with a decision made tonight. We should think about it, Robin. How many times we will we get an, an opportunity like this? Mm. Don't listen to this shit, Robin. <laughs> I mean, he still kills someone. I got to say, a deal sounds pretty sweet. The Celta places his hand on the desk and leans back. Oh, fell in the chair like a king on a throne. Decision time, gentlemen. What's this going to be? Fuck this. I say we shoot him. <laughs> Mr. Joker Joe, and to hell with the consequences. Save your breath. You're going to prison for what you've done. Think about the new life we could build. Why are we still talking about this? My piece is loaded and there's a bullet with your name on it. Go sell it down. Hmm. Let's go then. Want to shoot someone? <laughs> What's that? Looks at the gun. Looks at the guns on your waist. Waist. With a flicker of anxiety, his mask of civility cracked into. Let's call the station. This combat needs to have his day in court. Act. Discuss. Fucking act. <laughs> draw my fucking weapon. You draw your weapon. The Celta stiffens in his chair. Color draining from his face. Lower your gun. Nah, nigga. This is for Cosmina. Eh, yeah, nigga. You press the trigger. His lifeless body falls on the couch. The silence seems to fall upon the city. Justice has been delivered. <laughs> yeah, then at least could have shown me shoot him. Like, uh, the first sunner passes through the window. Robin takes her gun. I'm sorry, partner. I'm ready to face the consequences. Listen, you're too young to spend your life in jail. Let me take this responsibility. No way. You're sure, friend Robin, but I couldn't live with this burden. Yeah. You must be another option. Thank you for this. I'll do everything I can to get you out of there, Robin. Everything. Mama my words. You must be another option, like... One of us must pay for this man's life. Justice will always prevail. You're true for Robin. But I could deliver this burden. Storm Cape's prison. High security parlor. 1991. Um, the parlor is nice it's crowded with dangerous criminals who are visited by their lawyers their family and but more often by accomplices who are, who are pursuing their activities outside the prison guard observes with caution every one of them ready to tease on the first fox pass Robin gives you a package happy vigilante's birthday <laughs> how long was it? 5 years? I thought you were taking it easy on a Caribbean beach. 
I know you were in prison. It was a little cloud under this beautiful Floridian sun, I must admit. What is this gift? I hope it's not a sweater and you knitted me or some bullshit like this. They would be lucky to hang me with it. What have been during those five years? Here we are. Cut from the rest of the world. So you survived Storm Cave. You contradicted the rumor. Yeah, what's this tech? What is this gift? Mr. Chukujoy, I'm here to get you out of here. I must admit that the first days were tough, but Poseleto was right. I'm slightly crooked. I managed to adapt pretty well. My calls have failed. You aim to become president and grant me a presidential pardon? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I've been told there's a new chief here. I didn't know you had an entrepreneurial spirit. My cause have failed. Um, I've been, I'm going to be within those walls until the end of my days. I I tried to evolve despite the constraints. constraints. It's a cake with a hidden nail file inside. Hmm? Oh, my, my cell does not even have bars. That's a fucking steel door. I hope the cake is good at least. My car. Ah. <laughs> Berlin's wall fell. Mm. Let's open the package. Robin, stay silent. Like Ruskies, cuddling, Yankees. Fuck. I'm not that bad in jail after all. People are playing a Japanese video game, Mario Browser? Mario Brothers? Mario Brothers sound like a mafia. Um, my cause have failed. I'm here to get you out of here, the hard way. Miss Press, are you really serious about the hard way thing? I have two machine pistols hidden on me. No fucking way. Okay. The guy on my left is Vlad, the rock wall. A guy at my commands who has a knife on him. There's another machine pistol hidden for you in the cake. No, we have machine pistol in the cake as well. If we kill the guard, this bastard Tony behind me, we can have the keys of the control room and free all the prisoners. Create a riot. I have an armored four times four waiting for us outside with a skilled driver who can take us to chapel to disappear. Vanish. We're going to create our gang robin. We're going to take over Antouch and make it ours. I'll be the gun and you'll be the brain. Old school style. Old school style. I think this city owes us something. And it's time to take to make it pay. Why are you doing this, Robin? In two minutes we might be both dead. Honestly, retiring in the sun is awfully boring. Escape, stay silent. Uh, I already brought the cake and everything. Might as well. In Storm Cape. In Storm Cape, a concert of gunshots and a background of continuous screaming, howlers of horror, and screams of joy in town far away from the military fortress. A fire of sirens and despair awakes. The night falls on Antouch, celebrating the dawn of a new empire. The end. Thanks you for thanks you for playing. Oh, this was good. This was actually good.
Oh, <laughs> 